Good afternoon. I'm Pat Summerall here with John Madden. And John, the Redskins are, of course, disappointed with their 2-7 and seven record, but they have a new complexion now with a new quarterback, Gus Farratt. Yeah, isn't it amazing how everyone is with Gus Farratt? We talked to Coach Norv Turner yesterday, and he gets all excited about this guy who's a rookie seventh-round draft choice. Jim Lachey, the offensive line, they love this guy. The running backs, Henry Ellard, the wide receiver. And, and here's a guy who's just been in this league for about six months, and he has really taken this team over and this city over. And I think what he has to do, he has to have some success early today. And, you know, start off good, keep his confidence, not have any turnovers, because he can get some things against this 49er defense. And you know the 49ers say almost to a man that they're not thinking about next week against Dallas, but in some ways they have to be. Yeah, I think so. Probably the thing that helps them not think about the Cowboys is the fact they're coming off a bye week. So they've had a couple weeks to get ready for this stretch run. I think they're thinking of this kind in two games. That Today they want to look good. Steve Young wants to be sharp. He wants to get the ball to Jerry Rice, have good offense. They want to tackle well. Do all those things so that they're sharp and they're ready to go and take those things in the next week's game against the Cowboys. Coming up, it's the 49ers and Redskins from RFK Stadium. John and I will be back for the opening kickoff when Fox NFL Sunday continues after these messages from your local station. Seventy-one degrees to wind south at five to twenty-two miles an hour. Forecast thirty percent chance of rain, but. There is a threat of high winds and perhaps a thunderstorm later on, maybe by the fourth quarter. 49ers have won the toss. They'll receive. Chip Low Miller will kick it off in the direction of Dexter Carter and Dex Derek Lavelle. Carter. Coverage is excellent. Steve Young will lead this 49er offense, the league leader. In front of him, and this is the best looking offensive line he's had in a while. Harris Barton is back. Derek Deese is the right guard. Bart Oates, Sapolo. Those were people who will handle the ball. Waters, Floyd, Rice, Taylor, and Brent Jones. A lot of weapons in front of Steve Young. Ricky Waters. Behind the line of scrimmage by Sterling Palmer and Ken Harvey who's having a great year. The Redskin defense. Up front, Dexter Nottage, Bobby Wilson, Tim Johnson, and Sterling Palmer who just made that stop. Andre Collins, Tyrone Stowe, and Ken Harvey, the linebackers. In the secondary, the veteran Daryl Green, Daryl Morrison, Martin Bailey, the safety, Tom Carter, the other cornerback. Second and 11 at the 14. Young to throw it. Right. Well, that'll kind of quiet the crowd down, won't it? Just know it's just a matter of time. They're going to get the ball out to Jerry Rice. I mean, he can get open any way there is. I mean, here he just runs a little inner hook, comes under control, catches the ball. And one thing the Redskins say that they want to do is they know that these 49er receivers are going to catch passes but they want to tackle him right there when they do. That time, they had three tacklers right around Rice. Jerry Rice on that completion got a first down. Young will throw it again. Rice, incomplete, no flag. Rice, with that reception on the previous play, has caught a pass in 136 straight games now. And Steve Young was trying to force that one there. They were. Yeah, that was a misread or something because Jerry Rice was a deep guy, and I know that you know he's one of the greatest. He may be the, the greatest receiver that ever played the game, but it's still tough to throw to a guy you know, when he's double covered. And that was good double coverage on Jerry Rice. Excellent. Excellent. Darrell Green comes with Rice. Wide right. Ricky Water. Another 49er first down. There are so many ways they can hit you. Yeah, this is a new way for the 49ers, kind of just blocking man and getting a, a lead draw in there. You're going to see William Floyd give him a lead. He's going to be the lead guy. Of course, Ricky Waters is the, 
is that Kerry, guys, see, they start to double. There's a lead. It's a little draw there. See Floyd get that block there? He just takes that linebacker down. I tell you, Ricky Waters is gaining a lot more yards with William Floyd as his fullback now. William Blocks Floyd, like that. 240 pounds, and he can run and block, obviously. Here's Young back to throw it again. Underneath to Ricky Waters. Stopped by Daryl Morrison. This is what the 49ers do so well. They just move the ball around. I mean, they mix up pass, they mix up run. And then, you know, it's not all one guy. You just have to cover everyone. It's like Daryl Green was saying yesterday. He said, you know, these 49ers, he said, other than the center, two guards and two tackles, he said they have everyone running out for a pass, and they throw it to all those guys. And they're all crossing. Yeah. Nate Singleton. And Ed McCaffrey. Split wide this way to the left. Dexter Carter was the man in motion. William Floyd gets the carry, and he's not going much of anywhere. Ken Harvey out there to knock him out of bounds. Hey, Floyd is one of those fiery guys, too. I mean, I mean, he's a rookie, but he brings some toughness to this offense, and I think once in a while, the 49er offense tends to get a little too finessey, and you need some toughness. Remember, for years, they had Tom Rathman back there. Now here's a guy who's a tough guy, Steve Wallace. You see that thing he's wearing yeah. on his helmet there? He's had some concussion problems, so he's wearing that shell that is rubber on the outside and foam on the inside. Where's that shell over his helmet? That may be another new word, finesse. Finesse. I like it. Yeah, they'll get finesse on you. Young throw. Ricky Waters. Could be gone. Martin Bayless finally got him down, but that's the one thing the Redskins said they had to do. Tackle after the catch. Yeah, they know they know that they're going to catch a ball. They know that guys are going to get open. And you watch Ricky Waters. He just comes in motion here, so they have three guys out there. Then he runs a post pattern from the backfield to the motion, to a slot, and then catches the ball, makes guys miss, and then gains another 20 yards. First and 10, 49ers from the 18. Jerry Rice, good wide left. Singleton is the other wide receiver. John Taylor rested. Rice, a little bit high, but the coverage was good by Daryl Green. Yeah, that's what he wanted. He had his one on one there. And here, this one just gets away from him a little. You watch, it's just going to go right through Jerry Rice's hands. The, the, the coverage was pretty good. You see the ball goes up. I think maybe he even deflected that ball a little or got in Jerry Rice's eyes. Just got a hand on it. Yeah, because that ball went right through Jerry Rice. Second and ten. That's why Daryl Green is also one of the best players in this league over all those years. Waters. Inside the 15-13. Harvey and Bayless on the tackle. There's Norv Turner. Norv Turner is the, you know, obviously he's the head coach, but he's also, you know, the offensive guy. And I'll tell you, there's nothing that frustrates offensive guys more than long drives by the other team's offense. You can't score many points with your offense when they've got the ball. No, and you just get frustrated. You know, you stand there, come on, let me in. Give me the ball. Let me have the ball. And the other guy's got it. Third and six. Three wide receivers. Brent Jones in motion. That collision, that kind of collision, will knock the ball loose from a lot of people. Martin Bayless applied the hit to that'll, Jerry Rice. That'll knock a lot of stuff loose. <laughs> you watch here. This is Steve Young's fault. I mean, Steve Young not only has to see Jerry Rice, but he has to see Bayless there. And you can't lead your receiver into a hit like that. I mean, I, you know, a reception is one thing, but one, you lead a guy in here, and it's not even a first down. I mean, this, this is pretty good coverage there, a big hit there, and it's not worth it. That play and that throw by Steve Young was not worth the result. That wasn't worth the risk. Jerry Rice stayed down momentarily, but he's up and trotted off under his own power. Now, if the quarterback throws it in there, the wide receiver has to go for it, so the quarterback shouldn't throw it in there. So, Doug Bryan will try to put the 49ers on the board from 32 yards away. High enough 
long enough and good enough. And the 49ers break early. They lead 3-0. Back at RFK Stadium at the moment under blue skies. And the Redskins have to be a little bit uh, proud of the fact that they only allowed three points out of that very impressive drive by the 49ers. Jerry Rice uh, still over on the bench after that hit by Bayless. But both are smiling. So yeah, that must be okay. Yeah, that's that's the good news because they ran a play pass away from him. They thought they'd get one on one and they got double coverage. Brian Mitchell. Still on his feet. Not anymore. Kevin Mitchell took him down. For the Redskins, led by Gus Ferrat. His third NFL start. The numbers don't look that good, but he's been impressive. Lachey, Brown, Giesick, McKenzie, and Simmons in front of Gus Ferrat. The runners and ball handlers that he'll have back there with him. Ricky Irvin, Cedric Smith, the fullback. Henry Ellard having a great year. Desmond Howard and Ethan Horton. Three wide receivers. Jenkins in motion for a first. Titus Weiner. Well executed, but not much doing. Flag on the play. As you said, they started with three wide receivers. The third wide receiver was Titus Winans. He ran the reverse, and that's going to be a 15-yard penalty against the 49ers. Winans picked up about five, first and then foul. he was hit out of bounds. And hit out of bounds, number 36. 15 yards, first down. Call against Merton Hanks. See if we can see it. That's Deion Sanders on Desmond Howard. Yeah, and here's here's the end of the play. See right there, he's out of bounds. Now the play should be over. And I don't know, Hanks didn't do anything. And he certainly didn't. That had to be against Lee Woodall. Number 54 had him. After he got out of bounds, he threw him to the ground. But they said number 36, Merton Hanks, and Hanks was just standing there watching. 67. Certainly it was not Merton Hanks. First down, Redskins in 49er territory. Gus Ferrat. Incomplete intended for Ellard. Let's look at the 49er defense now. Led by the two men in the middle of the four-man front. Dana Stubblefield and Brian Young, those two men. Dennis Brown and Ricky Jackson on the outside. The linebackers, Norton Plummer and Lee Woodall, the rookie. Good secondary, Sanders and Eric Davis. The corners, Hanks and McDonald, the safety. Second and ten. Irvin. Four, maybe five. Eric Davis for the stop. You know, one of the interesting things with this uh, 49er defense, they don't flip-flop Deion Sanders a lot, but on that play, they did flip-flop him. They brought him over here to the left side to play against Henry Ellard. You see, it was just a run here, but but he's out here on this side. They're just going to run, run to the inside here. You see, everyone stacked inside. That's where they ran, but he was one-on-one, -on -one, and that's what they allow when Deion can cover man-to-man. -man, uh, they can stack inside. Passing down. Rock gets away from the rush. Incomplete. Ricky Irvins was the intended receiver. 49ers had a blitz going. Roby is in for the Redskins. It looks like Jerry Rice is okay because you can see when they smile, the quarterback comes up to him and is happy that he's there. And the key thing is he's putting on his helmet, though. And ready to go back, that would indicate. Reggie Roby, one of the best for a long time. He's the only guy punched with a watch on, too, isn't he? As far as I know of. That's a good one. Hustling down to take it down was A.J. Johnson inside the five. Nothing wrong with that, no penalty. 3 nothing, 49ers. RFK Stadium in Washington. Pat Summerall with John Madden. 3 nothing, San Francisco. 
Jerry Rice is back in the lineup. The 49ers pin deep in their own territory. Carter leaves and he's not going to return then even though he's on the coverage team A.J. Johnson can go and catch that punt. This is Floyd who barrels over one Redskin. I believe it was Ken Harvey. You know he has a nickname that he loves it's bar none and when 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 he was drafted by the 49ers in the first round his agent said this guy's the best fullback in the draft bar none. But when he came to the 49ers training camp, they nicknamed him Bar None. He likes it. He even signs his autographs at Bar None. His William agent. Floyd. His agent might be right. Here's Young to throw it. Chased by the Redskins. Gets it to Ricky Waters. Out of bounds. Flag on the play. You know, when we were talking to Ricky Waters and to Steve Young yesterday, we, you, know, you always talk to the running back about the running game, and Steve Young says, you know, that Ricky Waters is a great pass receiver. And he must have had that on his mind yesterday to throw to Ricky Waters because he's been doing that in this first quarter. You know, George Seifert almost said that, too, when he was talking about Ricky Waters. He said he's a great. And then he changed and said a very good pass receiver coming out of the backfield. Holding on the left cornerback of the defense. That penalty is declined. Jerry Austin. Jerry Austin is the referee. Uh, I think when you have a guy like Jerry Rice as a receiver, it's hard to say that anyone else is great, and the holding has to be right there. You see, again, it's it's he can he can play the run. You know, he can play the run block. He can hit within five yards, but you can't grab him by the jersey. I guess that was John Taylor. He grabbed first and ten. At the 15 as the 49ers got a little room. This is Floyd. Cut down by Govea. He doesn't like being cut down by Govea. I don't think he likes what Govea said after he cut him down. You know, that's one thing that Kurt Govea can do. He can read a play, and then when he gets there, he can tackle. Kurt Govea is one of those guys who's undersized, but he's a good football player. Here's a counter. Floyd is going to be in the open field with him. Govay just comes under control and just wraps him up. And see right there, he says something to him when he's down, and he grabs him. That kind of excited old bar none. Second and 14. Young. Incomplete. Intended for right. That was low enough, so Rice was not going to get hit. And that's probably what you know Steve Young fought about because he knew that that one down towards the goal line, he led Jerry Rice right into Martin Bayless, and he probably told him, "I may throw you that slant because that's a big part of our pass offense, but I'm not going to stand you up and lead you in there anymore." Three wide receivers, a chant of defense. Starts to swell through the crowd at RFK. Young out of the pocket for Nate Singleton. Another member of the 49er arsenal, and he's very good. You know, they have so many guys that you watch. Here's going to be Singleton right here. You got Rice out there, Rice outside. Everyone's saying, watch out for Rice, watch out for Rice. You see how they all kind of come off? Singleton comes just over the top of Rice and it looks like he just threw it over Rice's head to Nate Singleton. But you know that's one thing about Rice. Not only was he going to catch the ball, he'll also block for you. But when you run him out, a whole bunch of guys are going to go to Jerry Rice and let some other guys get some footballs too. On first down, it's Waters. Hit immediately by Tim Johnson and knocked backwards. You know that whole thing on that on that uh, uh, pass to Singleton was pass protection. I mean, this offensive line will watch him here on this on this blocking, but they really did give Steve Young a lot of time. There's that draw play that that they got a big play earlier on, and that time Tim Johnson he said, "I've already seen that one once. You can do it once, but you're not going to get that same play in there twice." Second down. Back to throw it. 
wheels it to his fullback Floyd this time a little bit shy of the first down wrapped up by Tyrone Stowe and Andre Collins yeah, that's one of the things there's Jim Lachey the offensive lineman John Giesick there thinking you know again you know that frustration of playing the 49ers in that if you go in there one two three and then have to go sit in the bench and just watch them you get frustrated because you want the ball back you want to get out there and play it's good to see Harris Barton back playing talking about playing he's had the bad elbow the bad tricep of course stopped short of the first down by Kurt Govea and Shane Collins we're yeah. talking about Kurt Govea of just being a good yeah. football player yeah you look at him he's not a big linebacker if you get on him you can block him but he's very hard to get to and if he gets to your guy he's usually a sure tackler they've always said not big enough not fast enough but he makes the plays and you always think that he's not going to make the team and then he's not going to start and number 54 seems to be out there most of the yeah. time when the Redskins play defense Klaus Wilmsmeyer back to punt just got it off it's a good kick Soars into the end zone and they will bring it back. Redskins will start from their own 20. Back at RFK Stadium in Washington. The 49ers three. Redskins nothing as we end or wind down the end of the first quarter. There's Ron Lynn, the defensive coordinator of the Redskins. You know, he's doing a pretty good job against the 49ers. What they're doing is run blitzing. And, you know, five of the eight rushes by the 49ers, they've been thrown for a loss because of that run blitz. Ricky Irvin got perhaps a yard, maybe a yard and a half. Bryant Young tripped him up. Hey, talking to, you know, the 49ers, George Seifert, he's talking about his defense. And I think... You know, like I was saying earlier, if the 49ers are going to be a championship team, this is the group that has to play championship football. I don't think they have yet. But the one bright spot in that front group has been those two defensive tackles. Second down. Pass complete from Farrat to Wynan. First down, Redskins. See, and here's what the 49ers have to do. They have to get a pass rush. Now, watch this pass protection. You know, and, and Gus Farad is very good at this, Pat, is if he can find a lane, if he can find a lane to throw in, he'll really step up and throw the ball. He said from the time he was a little kid, he always just went back and always threw the ball as hard as you could. I kind of like that. I mean, that's right. Yes, throw it hard. as hard as you can. That's Irvin. And he gets about five. Tim McDonald made the stop. Good block by Raleigh McKenzie. It seems like these these guys like Raleigh McKenzie, Jim Lachey, Ray Brown, Ed Simon, it seems like they've been here forever and they can still move around and pull and lead and trap and make blocks like that. And Jim Hannafin's still their coach. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Jim Hannafin, when you talk about old offensive line coaches that are good, there's an old line old line coach right there who is good. The rush by Stubblefield. Knocked the ball away from Ferrat. And he wisely fell on it. That was a good reaction by Stubblefield. Number 94, he's going to get penetration. And then as he comes in here, you see him right here. He gets a penetration there. And then and then he just goes for the ball. Frott was trying to get the ball up to throw it. And Stubberfield comes in here and just knocks it out of his hand. What's that right hand come in there? He got the left hand first, then the right hand. Frott said, whoa, I'm missing something here. It's a heck of a move, third and 11. Swings it out to Henry Eller. Pass complete, but not enough for a first down. Merton Hanks on the tackle. Yeah, that's that's the thing. When you when you don't get any yardage on first and second down, and you end up third and long, it's it's tough for any quarterback in this league to make first downs. And then you complete a pass and you still have to punt, which is it always been one of the most frustrating things in the world for me. 
See that watch on Roby? You yeah. never know. You never know what you have to do when you're out there on that football field. <laughs> Somebody might ask you what time is it? He's the only guy who could answer. Dexter Carter. Redskins down in good shape. James Jenkins was there first. Three nothing. Less than a minute left in the first. Forty Niners three. Washington nothing. Deion Sanders has a piece of tape on the back of his helmet with the words of the letters WZ. That's in memory of uh, Whitey Zimmerman who was with the Atlanta Falcons since their inception way back in 1966. And Dion says that that man was like a father to me. And that's in memory of Whitey. And I think at, at this time we all remember Whitey Zimmerman. I mean he was one of the great contributors and, and great men in professional football that everyone enjoyed. Young intended for Rice, covered by Darrell Green. You know, one thing about Daryl Green, you look at him and he's a 12-year veteran, but he's one of those guys that just never got old. I mean, I mean, I mean he has, he, I mean, he still has that speed, and once, once you have that, that speed and the quickness that goes with it, you can play in this league forever. North Turner said uh, yesterday, if you didn't know of his tremendous record, you'd think he was 25. He said, especially if he keeps his helmet on. Yeah. This is Ricky Waters. Surges outside the 30. Stopped by Tyrone Stowe. One thing I think with William Floyd starting at fullback, it, it seems to me, just observing, that it's made Ricky Waters not only a better runner, but a more reckless runner. Mm -hmm. I thought that he was running a little cautiously there and you know, kind of looking for things. But I think Floyd brought a little of that toughness to the offense. And I think that Ricky Waters started to run with a little more reckless abandon. He was seemingly waiting for the music to start. Now he's in the dance. Young the uh, Brent Jones. Touchdown San Francisco. Brent Jones his first catch of the day. And yeah, they got him on a linebacker. It was Lamont Hollingquist was on him. You're always looking for that matchup. You know, you say that you can't cover him. You can't cover him with the linebacker. And you're going to see here, here's Brent Jones. And you see Hollingquist, number 96. He was the closest guy to him. The safeties, you know, they're worrying about Rice and Taylor and the receivers. And Brent Jones just took off. Daryl Green caught him but couldn't do anything about it. Hollingquist took him all the way down the field and just couldn't catch him. 69 yards from Young to Brent Jones. You know, that's one thing, you have, when you have the Rices and the Taylors and the Ricky Waters and all those guys, sometimes you're going to look and find a wide open Brent Jones uncovered in the middle of the field. There was no pattern, he just ran. The extra point is good. Steve Young never saw this completion. Leveled by Ken Harvey. Just as he let go. 7-0 San Francisco. The 49ers 10, Washington nothing. And this is what happens when you have great receivers. The safeties look this way, the safeties look this way, and there's no one here in the middle. You see, they're going to double, double Rice, they're going to double Taylor, and we can stop it right here. We'll see, here we got a double here, we got a double here, and look, right there, no one is on Brent Jones. And that's what Jerry Rice and John Taylor bring to you. You, know, you say, we can't let them catch a ball. We're going to double them. But you can't double everyone. And sometimes when you try and double those guys, you leave someone wide open. Young is 7 out of 12. Brian's kickoff is going to be handled by Brian Mitchell. Runs into a pack of 49ers led by Kevin Mitchell. Yeah, Brent Jones trying to get his breath and talk on the phone at the same time. He can't even talk. <laughs> That's probably the longest he's run in a long time. It is his longest career catch. 
Yeah, for he a probably. Touchdown. And you know, if you don't have a lot of career catches for that long a run, you probably don't practice those long runs, and you know, you probably practice that little short stuff yeah. in the middle. The tight end usually catches. That little run in there and find a hole in the zone and sit down right there. Yeah, he, he, he found a big hole all the way to the goal line. And he had to run all the way to the goal line. Three wide receivers for the Redskins. Right. Pass is complete to Desmond Howard. First down, Washington. Yeah, that's what Farad has to do is start, start getting some first down passing, some second down passing, not get into those situations at third and long get the ball to his outside receivers he just threw to Desmond Howard there has to work Henry Ellard in because Henry Ellard is a guy that if he gets hot he can catch a whole bunch of passes perhaps having his best year ever after so many great years with the Rams that's Brian Mitchell got a couple maybe you know, the Redskins, Pat, on that play, they used a, a formation, Big Deuce. In fact, you see Ray Brown coming out now. Ray Brown is a guard. He goes to tight end. So they have Ray Brown here, then a tackle, then another guard, and a guard here. So this is their strong side. So they, it gives them an extra lineman. They're playing with three guards and two tackles, and that gives them a power running side. Second and eight. caught and complete and right now for an update for a McDonald's game break let's return you to James Brown in Hollywood Pat Summerall Scott Mitchell just started wearing contacts today vision is obviously blurred as Bryce Pop picks up his third interception of the season that's his first NFL touchdown Green Bay on top of Detroit seven nothing late in the first back to Pat first down Redskins back at RFK 10 nothing San Francisco Ricky Irvin's back the ball carrier. Got a couple. Stopped by Ken Norton. The other guy you see up in there is Tim McDonald. One thing about these 49ers, they got a couple safeties in Merton Hanks and Tim McDonald that will really tackle and tackle well. Tim McDonald, I mean, he likes to get up around close to that line of scrimmage where he can play like a linebacker. In fact, he's probably more of linebacker mentality than he is a defensive back mentality. Second and seven, Brian Mitchell this time. And Mitchell is very close to a Redskin first down. This is one thing North Turner said they had to be able to do, run the ball. Yeah, and you have to be able to mix things up. Isn't it something how the thing that got it started, though, was that first down pass out there to Desmond Howard, and that kind of loosened things up and got the 49ers to think, okay, on running downs, they will pass. Like somewhere in a football game, you can you always have to get that, into that thing where you don't care, you don't know what I'm going to call, we're not going to be predictable. That's close. It's that far, as a matter of fact. I used to get upset when the referee would do that on, on, on fourth down. You know, he would do that, he'd show the whole crowd, and then you'd send in your punt team and everyone would boo you. I'd say, why do you have to show? Why do you have to show everyone how far we have to go? I can't imagine that you ever got upset. I, I stayed upset. Second and short. Second on one side. Now they change it to third. Correctly. Irvins and Cedric Smith. The ball was given to Smith, who does nudge it far enough ahead to get the first down. Now, it depends on where they put that foot down, Pat. I mean, how they mark these things, I'm not sure. But if the line judge here, 51, is marking it, he's going to put it where his left foot is. That could be a first down. See, they got a good spot there. They've already moved the sticks. Now, Cedric Smith is an interesting guy, isn't he? Really? Norv was saying that he had him in camp, and then he cut him, and then he brought him back, then he cut him again, and... And he brought him back in. He brought him back just because he's a tough guy and he felt he needed some toughness on his offense. He needed a fighter. And he got Cedric Smith. Just for Rock with time. Lost the pass and it's almost intercepted. Intended for Titus Winans. Almost picked off by Merton Hanks. 
that's what the 49ers have is is they don't have a dominant front seven they don't have a good pass rush but once you get beyond that and get the ball downfield they have some good cover guys I mean, you have Eric Davis on one side of course you have Deion Sanders the best in football on the other side then you have as a safety Merton Hanks who can play as well as most corners in the league right so they always have three guys in there that no matter what you do they can cover second and ten Deion Sanders up to make the tackle and that's not one of Deion Sanders' no. strengths Deion Sanders doesn't come up with force and support and Deion Sanders doesn't play zone and that time he came up that is what you call a force when you run out to the corner side and he has to come up you call that corner force and there's Deion Sanders right up there he just threw a, a body block yep. leg whip collision type of deal what the heck was that that was not textbook where'd, where'd that come from third and 14 what was that was Deion a body block that's the way he does it a body blocker leg whipper Barat. Back in the pocket. Pass is picked off. This is Toy Cook. Toy Cook still running and out of bounds. And the 49ers take over in good shape. Yep, see, by Dion coming up good on that force, and that created that third and long, and that's the thing that a young quarterback can't handle. Now the Redskins getting third and long. He tries to force something, and there's Toy Cook waiting for the interception. 10-0, the 49ers over the Redskins. 49er ball at their own 47. They lead 10-0, second quarter. Ricky Waters leans ahead for a couple. Stopped by Bobby Wilson. Yeah, if we look back at that interception, Pat, by Toy Cook, we're going to see way over here is Toy Cook. Here's Henry Ellard. He's going to be doubled here. Toy Cook just kind of sits here. Farratt sees the double. Ellard runs away from the double, but he doesn't see Toy Cook sitting right there. You see him? And he comes in here, and once he runs that in, boom, right there. He didn't see Toy Cook. Here's Young back to throw it. To water. Close to a first down. Ken Harvey made the stop. Toy Cook's over there telling all the guys how, how smart a play that was because, again, he knew that he was looking to Ellard, so Toy Cook was free. So he could just watch the quarterback's eyes. And they had a double on Henry Ellard. So he's watching Frott, and then when Frott looks and throws to Ellard, he just stepped right in front of him. Frott didn't see him at all. Third and short. Steve Young doesn't like what he's looking at. He was concerned with Steve Young. Ah, uh, Steve Young <laughs> with Brent Jones. Sorry. 10 0. RFK Stadium in Washington. And it's turned out so far, at least, after all those threatening weather forecasts, to be a beautiful day. Yeah, and this is a beautiful place for a football oh, game. Do you remember when the when the Redskins were so good all those years? There was nothing better than the scene here at RFK Stadium. Those stands would rock. Third and one. Nothing. He didn't make any first down. William Floyd, the ball carrier, met by Ken Harvey. Steve Young is still staying in there. He wants to do something, go for it on fourth down or something, but George Seifert already sent his punt team in. That play didn't have a chance. I mean, he, they, just sent, they just sent Floyd in there with no help at all. I and mean, look, he has no lead. He has, he has nothing going in there. All there are is a bunch of white jerseys and penetration and bad things happening to the 49ers. And, they're going to wrestle Floyd until they get him down with about eight guys on top of him. Sterling Palmer, the Redskins, shaken up just a bit. And they're already playing without their other defensive end, Tony Woods. Maybe it's more than just a bit. They're running out of defensive linemen. In fact, the Redskins, North Turner's doing a, a real good job with this team, but he just doesn't have enough players. That's right. Klaus Wilmsmeyer back to punt. Brian Mitchell deep. Yeah. 
Good high kicks, fair catch. Mitchell did well to hang on at the 15. 10 nothing. 49ers lead. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. <laughs> Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Washington Redskins and the National Football League is prohibited. Obviously, they can't get it right over there, <laughs> and we're doing a simulcast. <laughs> the redhead, Sonny Jurgensen. Yeah, thank you, Sonny. We do all the help we can get. We'll yeah. take, especially when you got a <laughs> Hall of Fame quarterback over there like Sonny Jurgensen. Then right next to him, they have Sam Huff. You talk about some great football players. That's a booth full of talent. Yeah, they are. There's yeah. there's Sam right there. They haven't got the glasses up in his head. Someone ought to tell him, hey, put the glasses on your eyes. That's Ricky Irvin. Trying the right side for the Redskins. Yeah, that's one of the constants. It's kind of always been fun to do a Redskin game is, is seeing Sonny Jurgensen and Sam Huff. And, right. You know, it kind of reminds you of the roots of the National Football League. That, I mean, it was guys like that that were playing back then, not making a lot of money. Guys like, you know, yourself. And and to me, I'm always thankful when I see that. Because if it weren't for guys like those guys and all the old-timers that got this game going, we wouldn't have what we have today. Ricky Irvin. They're about the 24, short of a first down. By not much. Now, Sam, I know, didn't make much money, but Sonny, I think he was pretty well paid. Yeah, but, I mean, not not, uh, not really at that time. No. There's, a, there, there's a guy who didn't make a lot of money but made more money and led the Redskins to the Super Bowl, Doug Williams. Yeah. Remember that? You talk about a second half of football. He is getting into the That's what life all about, huh? circle of honor here at Arfic Stadium at half today, along with the guy I started to work with. When I first began, Jim Gibbons. Third and short. Maybe. I think he got it. Well, the fans are looking for something to root for, for here, so they're rooting for first downs. I think, I think the Redskins, you know, they just haven't gotten in sync yet. I mean, they haven't... The 49ers keep the ball so much, they kind of frustrate you, but 49ers haven't, you know, really taken that big lead. I mean, 10 to nothing, they've left the Redskins still in this game. Ricky Irvins, pretty basic, a couple of yards. Well, Charles Mann is in there now. Charles Mann, who played for the Redskins for... 11 years and now comes back to play against his old teammates I don't even feel that the crowd knows that that he's in there you know he was worried about it is he going to be chewed uh, is, is he going to be booed or cheered or whatever he should and be cheered I think I think he kind of sneaked in this game I don't think uh, they know he's here they saw him at left defensive end all the time he's on the right side nothing there for Ricky Irvins this time Yeah, that's one of the areas that the 49er defense are kind of short of defensive linemen. They try Ricky Jackson there, who's a linebacker, and they bring in Charles Mann playing the right side. And, and of course, they, you know, they, they started out there with Richard Dent, uh, who was injured and is still out. And they've been trying to get someone. Now they got Todd Kelly playing that position. So they're doing it with about four guys. Three wide receivers. Barack. Titus Winan, not a first down. This week's AFLAC NFL trivia question, who holds the record for the most seasons leading the league in passing yardage? And we'll give you the answer in just a minute. Reggie Roby's in, watch it all. I think it was Lum and Abner. I think it was, that's what... Bill Cosby was in before. That's what he called us. Lum and Abner. I haven't heard, <laughs> I haven't heard Lum and Abner. That dates us a little bit. I know, but I mean, that was where you were sitting by a radio when That's I was right. in the 
the fifth grade or something. Before TV. Yeah. <laughs> Lum and Abner. How did Bill Clark, where did he come with that? I don't know. Lum and Abner. Dexter Carter. To the 23. First down, 49ers. Right there. There's the cause. Made us a visit before the game. Looking good. Again, the Aflac NFL trivia question. Who holds the record for most seasons leading the league in passing yardage? The answer is ex-Redskin Sammy Ball. He led the league in passing six times. Also led the league in punting one year. Slinging Sammy Ball. Steve Young slinging it. Picked off by Govea. Oh, he's... <laughs> <laughs> He's down there. He's that one to Baltimore. I think I'll keep it. But that's the thing. Govea has been active today. They've been sitting there. The the Redskins haven't been able to get anything going. They just needed a big play. They're only down ten to nothing. The 49ers kept them alive. That ball just hit Ricky Waters. Govea was right there to come up with it. He put that thing in his left hand. And he was about ready to heave that thing. Yeah, left-handed. Govea in this first half has been all over the field. Tell you what. He always is. Yeah, I mean, he was in there. He's been running those run blitzes, and Steve Young threw a bad pass tipped by Ricky Waters. Brian Mitchell. The 49ers shut him down in a hurry. Merton Hanks and Lee Woodall. That's what good tackling safeties will do. I mean, Woodall was out there, and up comes Merton Hanks. I mean, he came flying up there to make that tackle. I like, you know, I think... So far, if they had an MVP of this 49er defense, I think it'd be that guy right there, Merton Hanks. Started the season playing cornerback. Then they got Deion Sanders. Then he went back to safety, as you said. He covers like a corner. Hits like a safety. Josh Farratt back to throw. It. To Ricky Irvins to the five. Redskin first down there. That's what the Redskins have to do, and that's what Norv is thinking of here, is getting yardage on first and second down because they haven't had much success on third, especially third and long is darn near impossible. They're not going to have that on this drive because we're on the five-yard line. First and goal at the five. Cedric Smith and Ricky Irvin. Irvin. Met by Ricky Jackson after he decided to take it outside. Yeah, he just didn't have any hole anywhere there. And the longer you, you spend in the, the backfield, the more defensive guys are going to be at the hole when you get there. And Norv is probably thinking here, he calls the plays. He's probably thinking here of a, a play pass you know, where, you, where you fake the run and you throw something. Because you don't want to have to get in that third down where you have to throw without taking a second shot. Two tight ends, Cedric Smith in motion. Roll out, play pass is right. Pass deflected. Almost caught by a lineman. Hit by Ken Norton. Third down. You know, that's that's probably the safest thing you can do with a quarterback is to is to, you know, down here you only have five yards to work to the goal line and 10 more yards is probably to bootleg them to roll them out and then just get a one on one situation and either keep it or throw it or throw it away. There's Richard Dent. Dwayne Board. Richard Dent's helping Dwayne Board coach on it. Whatever it takes. For us. The corner of the end zone incomplete. Desmond Howard, the intended receiver, will take the field goal. Says Norv Turner. Yeah, that's 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 the safest pass you can throw because what you do is you throw a corner. And what you do is you just throw the ball to that second pylon, that back pylon, and either your guy catches it or no one catches it. You see Farad is looking all the way, looking all the way, and he's throwing it right there. He can throw it right to a spot. So you can throw it to that pylon there. He just threw it a little high. But if you throw it to that pylon, and you throw it high, either your guy gets it or it goes out of bounds, you kick a field goal. Low Miller from 22 yards out. 
puts the Redskins on the board. 10 to 3. Outside RFK. Let's check what's going on. This is where they get out there and they start playing the fight song. Can't get a ticket. Stay outside and cook and play a horn. Yeah, but how about how about slicing that sandwich? Line. That that was a man-sized sandwich. What about this? Chicken well, the jambalaya is good, but the little thing. New Orleans and Metairie. It's yeah. his recipe. Yeah, but if it's so good, how come you put it in little cups? It looks like some leaves blew in there. Hey, and you can't beat this, though, Pat, huh? That's leaves right. and burgers. Yep. I mean, that's the fall. The only thing that's missing is frost on the pumpkin. But they have it all here, don't yep. they? I mean, they got the band. They got big old sandwiches. They got leaves on the ground turning. In the pot. And they got people like that. Yep, the hogs. Looking for acorns. Hog acorns, heads. I'm sorry. Yeah, they're they're not as active as they used to be. Remember, remember when they had John Riggins and oh, stuff yeah. in this place? Of, you know, Joe Theismann and the and the Smurfs and the Joe and the, Jacoby and, the and Hawks. his group. Remember those big old Hawks? Look, those guys play football. Low Miller's kick. The Dexter Carter at the three. Still on his feet at the 22. A lot of intensity on special teams. I think that I think with that new rule, when they move the ball back to kicking it off from the 30, I think I think there's really you know then they have to return them. Here Carter just gets knocked into a spinner. He didn't mean to do a spinner. He was there. He was going to run, and he got hit and he went pirouetted. That's one of those things you do on figure skates, right? Yeah, yeah. And then so, yeah. sometimes you pirouette and you get knocked off your axis. One of those axle things. <laughs> Double, double axle. Right. Young back to throw it. High and out of bounds. Intended for Rice. Young is down. Yeah, he was hit there by Tim Johnson. Tim Johnson was right there, and, and you're going to see him, number 78. He comes up here, and, and, and just as Steve Young is throwing it, you see he's working on Jesse Sapolo getting a penetration right there. He breaks off of it. And he hits Steve Young, and he wraps him up. And then he I, fell on him. That's what I think hurt him when he when he when he just fell here and wrapped him up and threw him to the ground. I think that probably took a little wind out of him. Second and ten, Young is there. He's tough. Rice, look out. He could break it. Chased by Daryl Green, who chases him out of bounds at the 23-yard line of Washington. That's what you call rack, run after the catch. There's no one better at it than this guy right here. He's going to catch the ball here. Then he's going to make Daryl Morrison miss right there. It makes him fall down. When Jerry Rice gets a ball, he is always thinking of scoring a touchdown with it. 55 yards. This is why you say Steve Young is a tough guy. Watch Tim Johnson take him to the ground here. Just watch his face here. This is a play before he hits Jerry Rice. I mean, you can tell that that hurt, but what do you do? You get up, you throw it to Jerry Rice. What does Rice do? He runs with it, but he also gets blocks by other guys. That was Nate Singleton making a block. And one thing these receivers do, they catch, they run, and the third thing is they all block for each other. Rice has two catches for 69 yards. Ricky Waters. Breaking away from tackles and touchdown Ricky Waters. Flag on the play. Maybe he stepped out of bounds. I'm not sure. Well, the officials marking it down there just before the goal line, Pat. And then North Turner seeing it go away. They thought they had Steve Young. They thought Steve Young was hurt. He comes back. He hits Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice makes a big play. Then that just kind of took all the air out of their defense. And then Ricky Waters hits him with a run. But you're going to see right here, Pat, the next step right there goes out of bounds. You see that left foot is out right there, right on just inside just the one yard inside line. Inside the one. It's first and goal from that point. Young. 
Quarterback sneak. No signal yet. That's where Steve Young says you go in a quarterback sneak, you come out a couple inches shorter. Cuts down. George Siebert has a new hairdo after that bye week and different looking guy, isn't he? Yes, he is. Norv just saw the air come out of this team. What a drive by the 49ers. Here Steve Young is just going to take the quarterback sneak here. You just take the ball and you look for a little soft spot. You don't run it right into your center. He saw that little gap to the right and he tried to hit it and get down low underneath everything. And succeeded. Doug Bryan for the extra point. Four plays, 78 yards. That's the way they do it. Watch Steve Young. Well, you know, we talked about how tough he was, but he's also strong. Watch him just drive in here, Pat. Never stopped his feet. Seven Central. Yeah, he's a lawyer, and he, he represents two Utes. Yep. Utes. Two What's Utes? a Utes? And he gets them off. You know, talking about lawyers, Steve Young is a lawyer. He, he passed, uh, uh, he graduated from law school this year. Bart Oates on the 49ers, the guy that snaps from the ball as a lawyer. Out of the end zone and hit the returner, Brian Mitchell. Coming up at the half, the Dockers halftime with James and Terry. They'll have scores and highlights and crunch time. That's coming up at half. North Turner, as you said, just saw hopes just shattered by the 49ers in four plays. Well, they were down by 10. They got uh, that interception by Kurt Govea that got him in good position. They had to settle for a field goal. I think that got things started. And then the 49ers just took the ball and drove it the length of the field. Got to be careful here. Don't get them in a position where they can get more in a hurry. Ball comes flying out, but he was down. Gus Farrakh and Mitch Gerber. Stopped by Tim McDonald. One thing about players, they play from the time the ball is snapped until the whistle blows. And then after the whistle blows, you argue. Timeout, San Francisco. And nothing ever changes. No. Nope. That's one thing nobody's going to change. San Francisco 17, Washington 3, second and 5. Timeouts remaining. The 49ers 1, Washington all of theirs. The 49ers will probably take one after this play. I think that long drive even affected the band because they thought they had him they thought they had momentum going their way they thought they had Steve Young down Quack! he just comes and hits Jerry Rice and Ricky Waters touchdown everything wilted here's Farad Henry Ellard makes the catch they'll have the first down way to stop Troy Wilson Holding his left wrist. Yeah, they're trying to. The 49ers take it, uh, their last timeout. Well, this is an injury timeout, I guess. You see right here. You see Wilson comes beyond. He's, you know, you know, good pass protection. Let's Ferrat step up, and that's what he has to be able to do. Step up, get the ball to those outside receivers and stay out of third and long situations. In spite of the injury, this is a charge timeout within two minutes of either half. The River Wild, Silkwood, Kramer versus Kramer. Now Merrill Streep takes on her most challenging role ever. Bart Simpson's girlfriend. Catch a brand new episode of The Simpsons with guest star Merrill Streep. Part of a full hour tonight at 8 Eastern, 7 Central. That's the 49ers last time out. I think what the 49ers were trying to do is use their timeouts and then, you know, stop the Redskins, force them to punt, get the ball back and take another shot at them before halftime. That'll be interesting to see the Redskins have all their timeouts left and a minute and two seconds. 
with a ball at the 35. You know, I mean, do they are they just satisfied with being down 17 to three, or do they try and get a first down or two here and then maybe take a shot at it? First down, Redskins. Brought the throw. Incomplete. Intended for Ricky Irvin at his feet. You know, one of the things that's, that's always tough here at this time of the year, and, and not making excuses for anyone, but when you throw that ball out of the shadow into the sun, mm -hmm. I mean, it's tough anyway. It's tough from defensive backs, but it's tough for receivers because the, the quarterback and the offense is in the shadow, and the right side of the field is in the sun. Rock going deep, incomplete. Intended for Desmond Howard. Proud and the coaches of the Redskins looking for a flag, but none appears. Look at Deion Sanders. He just pushed everyone off. He said he didn't do anything. And hey, that was right on the Redskin bench, and all the coaches jumped up and half the players to try and get a pass interference on that one. That's what John Madden was talking about just a minute ago. That sun looking right at you on the other side of the field, the opposite from where we are, from where you're watching. Barat back to throw it again. Ricky Irvin started up field before the ball got there. I'm surprised that either on that second down or third down that that wasn't a running play just to get the clock started again because one thing, one thing, you know, you take your shot, and then if you don't get it, I think you just run it out so they don't get the ball again. And yeah, as dangerous as they are. Yeah, and the, and the 49ers are going to get the ball again, and you know what it is. I mean, if they get it in Steve Young's hands and he gets it in Jerry Rice's hands, some big things can happen quickly. And they have some other people as well. And the, the only advantage for the Redskins is the 49ers have no timeouts, but they will get a timeout here at change of possession. Roby line drives this punt. Dexter Carter gets it back to the 30. Yeah, a little shoving match, a little finger pointing, no harm. So far, at least. The most intensity today has been on special teams after the whistle blows. I don't know where this this stuff all came up. I mean, you I don't won. know. I think I think they have to have better control of that. You know, that when the whistle blows, you just play and then you go to your benches or into your huddles and and shut up. Well, you got to get the last word in. Yeah, but I'm saying it takes them too long. They just go on and on and on. Enough, enough. You know, go play. Young's going to work. Sweet pass to Waters. Steps out of bounds at about the 35. Yeah, I think if there was one thing I wouldn't want to do is give the ball back to the 49ers no in this half. I mean, they're just too explosive. No way. Second and four. You know, and they're wearing those throwback jerseys again today, yeah. Pat. This is their they're five and zero in these jer in these jerseys. George Seifert is the most superstitious guy in the world, and he is going to have this team wear these jerseys at least till they lose the game. I'm surprised he got a new haircut. Out to Mark Logan. Logan steps out of bounds. Yeah, I don't know what this is, but his hair used to be longer. I mean, now he yep. got stuff, you know, coming like here and then going like that way. I mean, it's a it's a different type of look for George. In fact, he even looks like a different guy. That doesn't look like George Seifert. It's a rumple style. No, but it's kind of but it, but it's it, it's cut rumple. I mean, you don't yeah. cut it all the Well, you got to have something to rumple. What the heck do I know about cut rumple? <laughs> I mean, all I know he doesn't look like the guy he used to be no. the last game we did That's against correct. the Eagles. Incomplete. Through to the hands of Jerry Rice. Don't say that very often. And I think that was one that Jerry Rice was thinking of that rack, that run after a catch, because he was thinking not just of catching the ball, he was thinking of catching an in or a cross or something like that and making a touchdown out of it. I think when you talk about football and perfection, I think he's the definition. If you said, what's what's a word of 
What's the definition of perfection in football? It could be number 80. Ricky Waters steps out of bounds. Stops the clock with 17 seconds left. The tough thing they're having with these throwback jerseys, Pat, is keeping them tucked in. You look at Ricky Waters there, his shirt tail's hanging out. and I think that's against the law in this league now. It is. To have any, any shirt tail hanging out of your pants. But I know Floyd has a trouble keeping his in. Waters just heard about the rule and tucked his in. They can make you leave the field for yes, a play if you have your shirt tail hanging out. Here's Steve Young again. Wide open is Rice. How does he get wide open? They're hurrying. Five seconds, four seconds. They have no timeouts. That's Tim Johnson. He's yep. back on this side. Like he was walking off the field. Both teams are headed for the locker rooms. The 49ers never gave up trying to get more. That's the end of the first half. With the score, San Francisco 17, Washington 3. Stay tuned for the Dockers halftime as Fox NFL Sunday continues after these messages from your local station. This is the Dockers Halftime. 100% cotton, wrinkle-free Dockers. And welcome to the Dockers Halftime. Along with Terry Bradshaw, I'm James Brown. As we took a look at the first half, Washington and San Francisco. Clearly, San Francisco leads the league in scoring. Washington having a tough time, but they've got to read on young Gus Barat now. Yeah, the, the, the one thing about young quarterbacks is that you go in and you have a book on him after you see him play a little bit. You really shouldn't have to worry about having a read on Gus Farad. He's just a rookie. But the thing they're doing is they're dropping off in deep zones. They're rotating and taking. They're doubling, doubling Ellard, taking Ellard out of the football game. And I guarantee you at halftime, look for the backside. Look for the other receivers to come in and run the deep ends. They're going to, Ellard will not be there this game. Well, Washington needs a read on San Francisco's quarterback, Steve Young. As a matter of fact, take a look at the big play from the first half. Well, this was in a close formation. Inside guy went outside, picked the outside linebacker that had uh, Brent Jones man for man. Jones makes the great reception. Daryl Green, I don't know what he was thinking. Just tackle him, get on his back, get him down to the ground. He misses him another, a real nice, easy touchdown for the 49ers. Daryl Green had enough time to size him up, but went between his legs. I don't believe that. Well, I don't know why he didn't try to tackle him. He didn't mm -hmm. try to tackle him, try to cut his legs out from under him, when in fact he should have just grabbed on, held on. All right, San Francisco leading that one at the half, 17 to 3. Okay, down. Make that in Minnesota. Hey, boy, what an ugly affair up until the last few minutes of the first half. The Vikings lead it by a touchdown. Down. Mm. Warren Moon in stride. Jake Reed, quick post. Once again, cornerback makes the tackle or attempt at it. Reads off to the races. Finally is brought down. That sets up a touchdown pass from Warren Moon. In this game, good defensive football game. We said on our pregame show that, that we had to have Everett going deep. He went deep to Quinn Early, missed him wide open. Look for that again. Good defense indeed. As a matter of fact, Minnesota, the only team to get inside the 20. Obviously, they scored. New Orleans not yet to do that. We're trailing by a touchdown. Packers, boy, I tell you what, Scott Mitchell wearing contacts today, but he is having a rough game. His team trailing 24-7. The cheese heads are out, but boy, look at Scott Mitchell. Well, yeah. Bryce Pop drops back. The thing he does best is he gets in open field. He's smart. There's one or two interceptions. Here comes Mitchell again. Play action. Has his new contacts on. Feels the pressure. Unloads down the middle. Wrong place. No, not that. Don't do it. Not against the kid. Leroy Butler. He's there. Last week, Mitchell with three interceptions. Already in this game, two interceptions. And then finally, KO. Mm. Two interceptions indeed, four turnovers by Detroit, and Detroit is trailing 24-7. to Other scores are pass along to you. Chicago's Steve Walsh started off hot right now, leading by a field goal in that contest against the Tampa Bay Bucks. Atlanta on top of San Diego, 7-3. Keep in mind, Stan Humphreys is not starting that quarterback for San Diego. Indianapolis and Miami, a four-point lead in favor of the Colts in that contest. And Pittsburgh and Houston, again, it's been the battle of field goals there, and they're all knotted at six apiece. We'll be back with some highlights. You won't want to miss right here on the Dockers Halftime. Halftime at RFK, San Francisco 17, Washington 3. This first half highlight is brought to you by MCI, Proof Positive. 
Yeah, I think you see the 49ers have so many weapons. You know, you think about the outside receivers, you think about Ricky Waters. Sometimes here's Brent Jones, and they just let him go. I mean, you're worried about doubling this guy, doubling that guy, and that's exactly what happened here. They doubled the outside and the left, doubled the outside and the right, and Brent Jones went straight up the middle. 69 yards. You know you get the feeling with all the weapons that the 49ers have that the score being 17 to 3 that the Redskins don't quite have enough to be a match. Yeah, they don't have enough players and they don't have enough speed. I mean, mm -hmm. if you just watch this game, to me it's all about speed and it's about quickness and the, the 49ers have speed. I mean, they have team speed, they have it on offense, they have it on defense, they have it on special teams and, and they're not only too talented in this first half, but they're also just too fast for them. And uh, they've gotten away a little bit from that uh, finesse approach to the game that we talked, talked about at the beginning. Well, I think, you know, getting Steve Wallace back at left tackle, getting Jesse Sapolo back now at left guard, getting Harris Barton back today. They're starting to get their line back, and then they have William Floyd at fullback, and I think that takes a little of that finesse away. It gives them a little toughness. Halftime statistics then. 269 passing yards for San Francisco to 68. Yeah, but look at that, Pat, after the catch. I mean, they could. Yeah. 269 catches, then another 136 uh, yards are running after the catch. That's what you call the yak, yards and, after the catch. And that next category, first downs, North Turner was saying yesterday, for us to be effective, for us to have a chance, we have to get at least 20 first downs. Yeah, I prefer 22. And then, you know, you look at that time of possession. The Redskins have won the time of possession, but, again, it gets down to boils down to what you do when you have the ball in your right. time of possessions. And the 49ers were always doing something, and the Redskins didn't do anything. Doug Bryan will kick off to start the second half. Brian Mitchell and William Bell back deep for Washington. Quarterback comparison in the first half. Young, 13 out of 21, one touchdown, one interception. Gus Farratt, 8 of 17, 75 yards, one interception, no touchdown. Doug Brian to kick it off. Brian Mitchell. To the 40. Outside the 40. Stopped by McCaffrey. Now that's something. There's Jerry Rice getting some oxygen yeah. after halftime. <laughs> You'd think that that would be after a long run or something, but he's trying to get some of that O up in there, and, it, and he didn't even have it turned on. He was saying that a lot of times he can't sleep the night before a, a game. Most people get up and read a book or oh, get a glass of milk or something like that. He gets up and rides a bike. Uh, he's, he's not only perfect and a great player, but he's hyperactive. Yeah. Brock. Passes low. Intended for Henry Ellard. You know, anytime you have a young quarterback, and I've said this before, the, the young quarterback is going to struggle. Sometimes it's his first game, and sometimes it's his second, and sometimes it's his third. But if you're new in this league, you're going to struggle. Gus Farratt didn't struggle in his first game, didn't struggle too much in his second, but he is struggling here today. I mean, at some point it's going to show, and it's starting to show that this is a rookie seventh round draft choice. Second and ten. Brian Mitchell gets nothing in there in that third and long situation again. Yeah, and that's, that's the thing that's been killing them. I mean, they have they have some nice little passes that can gain about five or six yards on third down, but they don't seem to have anything that they can hit on this 49er defense against their nickel defense at about, you know, 12 yards or so down the field. Third and long. Here's Rod back to throw. Almost had the ball knocked loose. Finally, he takes to the ground, chased by Bryant Young. Well, and I'll tell you, he had he had Henry Ellard was wide open. I mean, Henry Ellard is going to be wide open in the field. No one covered him. See, Farrat didn't look. Henry Ellard is in the middle. Again, they darn near got the ball out of there, but he didn't see Ellard. But had he seen him, that would have given him a first down. 
And you're just going to see him right here in the middle. You see when he breaks free right now, there's Henry Eller there. We can see him here. We can freeze it. It's too bad Gus Frott couldn't freeze it. We're not being chased by those 49 linemen. Roby's punt is a good one. Gets to Carter. Zipped up just outside the 20. By Pat Eiler. 49ers with their first possession of the second half coming up. Beautiful blue skies at RFK Stadium, John. Well, you know, Steve Young is, is not only going to move the ball around the field, but he's going to move it to different receivers. He threw it to six different receivers. Look, four for four to the left, five for nine in the middle, one for two to the right. Most of his balls will be in the middle and the left. He doesn't throw a lot in this right quadrant, but he does throw the middle and left most of the time, but he throws it to a lot of different receivers. This is Ricky Waters. Outside the 30. About an eight-yard surge. Stopped by Ken Harvey. You know, that's the other thing that having a guy like Jerry Rice out there and these receivers that, you know, they the Redskins are so concerned about covering and covering Rice that sometimes they give a, a, a soft corner. They don't get a lot of force up there because they're running off in coverage all the time. Rice comes right this time. Waters and Floyd. Waters again. Not there this time. Hit first by Dexter Nottage. You know, Jerry Rice not only gets open, and we, we look here so far, he's had three catches for 90 yards, an average of 30 yards a catch. Henry Ellard has three for 25, 8.3. And again, I think a lot of that is Rice, but a lot of that is Steve Young getting him the ball in places, too. Third down, two perhaps. Steve Young back to throw it. Gets his first down to Nate Singleton. It seems like Steve Young has been knocked down a yep. lot today. I mean, I, you know, that's that's one thing that, that that you worry about. I mean, they are moving the ball, they are completing passes, they are winning the game, but you don't like your quarterback to take a lot of hits. And it seems like every time that the play's over, there's always someone nicking or nipping or grabbing or slamming Steve Young to the ground. On first down, Young back to throw it. William Floyd. Good pass. Yeah, it's good to see Harris Barton back. Uh, Patty injured, tore his tricep in the opening game of the season. And, and he's been, you know, they had surgery on that. They sewed it back together. And he's been wearing a form of a brace. He had this special brace made for the game. The thing he worries about is this hinge right there. He worries that guys are going to grab that hinge. He can't extend the left arm fully, but you don't want it extended fully all the time. He's been effective so far. Here's Steve Young. He too has been effective. Heavy pressure by the Redskins. And the pass to single and up the middle is incomplete. Bobby Wilson with the rush on Steve Young. Like we said, it's just about every time. Here's Wilson right here. And it's just about every time that Young throws a ball, there's always someone. See Wilson break through, and he's just picking them and just throwing them to the turf. And again, you know, that doesn't look like a lot, but those things add up. And he's been down seven game. times. Yeah, and, and, you know, I mean, those things, like George Foreman hit you. You know, you keep hitting and hitting. I mean, the 10th round, something you get a knockout. Third and long. Young again, Chase. And down he goes from behind by Ken Harvey. That gives these people here something to yell about. Ken Harvey is the is the speed rusher, and he's going to come from from the backside. You see right there, Wallace is balking him, and 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 Young looked, and he saw Harvey come off of Steve Wallace, and he knew that he had to run the ball. And then of course, then the thing that Steve Har that Harvey can do is catch him. Steve Young has been under pressure. Klaus Wilmsmeyer 
Back to punt. Brian Mitchell deep for the Redskins. Not his best. Mitchell gets away from one. Almost broke something. Singleton hit him first and then turned around and came back and finally made the stop. 17-3 San Francisco. 17-3, 49ers leading. They talked about severe weather coming later this afternoon. Boy, it doesn't look like it now, does it? Jesse Sapolo closest to you. Steve Wallace. Steve Wallace wearing that special uh, pad on his helmet. Had a few concussions. In fact, Steve Wallace was worried about that. He even considered retirement for a while. Ricky Irvin, not much. The old counter, Trey, stopped by Dennis Brown and Lee Woodall. Yeah, and I think this is going to be a big test. I think this is what the 49ers, you know, during their bye week, I think they worked on it. I think they're working on today is being able to handle the run because next week when they play the Dallas Cowboys in Candlestick, you know that they're going to get a heavy dose of Emmett Smith. Second and eight. Wyman's takes the shot, the strike from Farratt. Again, if they give if they give Farratt the pass protection, which they do, you have to get those two tackles in the middle block. You see, they give him a solid middle there. Then that's a pocket. Then he can step up and throw the ball. And he found Titus Winans right in the middle. I tell you, they got Deion Sanders over there just manning up on Henry Allard and. I don't even think Farratt's going to look at him anymore. Right at midfield, first and ten. Semi rollout. Farratt to James Jenkins, incomplete. In fact, they tried to get Henry Ellard on that time. He was lined up in the right side against Deion Sanders, and he ran a double move. It's an out and up, and he doesn't get anything. But here he is here, and he's going to run out. Then he's going to run out. Then he's going to run up. You see the out there? Dion didn't bite at all. He just waited for him. See, they wanted him to come up and run up and bite on that out. Then they would run beyond him. He just dipped his head. That's yeah. as big I mean, a he's bite too as he quick. Yeah, I mean, even his mind thinks too quick. He didn't. He, he didn't even take a half a step bite on that. Second and ten. Rod Taylor. Yes, he got it. Eric Davis on the coverage. You know, it's interesting. Yeah, they had Deion Sanders on him before. Now they got Eric Davis, and he's playing off here. You see, he's playing off, and that lets Ellard just come up. And, and Davis slipped right at the end, coming out of his break. Ellard came back and caught the ball. Deion Sanders that time was on the other side. So maybe Henry that's Ellard. the time to go to work on Henry Ellard when it Deion is. Sanders isn't on him. Dion is down at the bottom of your picture right now on Desmond Howard. No, it's Ellard, I'm sorry. But Ricky Irvin just finds a little daylight. Gets down to about the 32. Tim McDonald made this stop. You know, it's funny how, you you know, Norv Turner has all those plays there in that sheet. And you have a, about 10 times as many passes as you have runs. But... If you don't get the runs going, nothing else seems to work. Yeah, I mean, you're going to score with the touchdown. You're going to score with the passing. You're going to get the big plays with the passing. But to keep everything held together, you have to have the running. Second down. Ryan Mitchell this time. Nothing doing. Maybe a yards met by Dennis Brown. Dennis Brown was a, a left defensive end, but he plays the strong side. Now they flip-flop him. In fact, they're flip-flopping him right out of the game now, but he plays on the on the strong side or away from the open side, and they try and let Ricky Jackson stay on the open side. Now they go on that nickel package again. Jackson stays. Toy Cook and Dana Hall come in as extra defensive backs. Redskins are two out of nine in situations like this, the third down situation. Run. That's a Redskin first down to Ricky Irvin. 
Good job of blocking by Jim Lachey. He was being rushed by Todd Kelly, and he just rode him right back, and he rode him right beyond Gus Farrat. Watch Lachey here, and here's Todd Kelly. He's going to come here, get him here, and then just bump him out right at the end and let Farrat step up. You see the rush here, you see how Lachey gets position there, and then right there, he bumps him up, and that lets Farrat just stand there like a skeleton drill. First down, Redskins at the 49er 26. Farrat will throw it on first down. Ellers is high. Covered by Merton Hanks. Think about Norv Turner. He's, he's going to throw the ball. I mean, Norv Turner. You know, we'll go for it. I mean, he, you know, was worked under Ernie Zampezi, and that was Ernie's feeling that you always go for the pass, and you know, and always go for the end zone, and do all those things. And those guys in that, you know, they're all out of air. Coriel, Don Coriel's offense. When they, when they get close, they're going to take their shots. Three wide receivers. Draw play on second down. Urbans gets a first. Look what they have to do. You know, they've had good pass protection. Here it's going to be a draw. A little delay, and Urbans is going to hit it right in there. This is kind of, you just bring the ball back, delay it. A little double team there, a pick a hole. He started to the inside, and then he went back and ran right off his double team. They get Simmons there, the right tackle coming down and collapsing that side, and Ricky Urbans ran right off Ed Simmons' block. Urbans did not get the first down. He's about a foot short. So it's third and about one foot. Flags fly. They take too much time. Yeah, if they did, that's a coach killer. I wonder if they thought. Ball start. Number 67. Five yards. It's still third down. Ray Brown. Yeah. That's 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 the thing that'll kill you. Ray Brown is a guard, but on short yardage he plays tight end. This is Ray Brown here at the tight end. You see him move right there? That's it. You know, and they were going to run at his side too. You see the fullback starting in that direction. That's the first Washington penalty. And that takes you out of sure yardage. You have a short yardage, which was almost sure yardage, did not so sure. 74 yard with the interception by Tim McDonald. That's a heck of a catch. Yeah, but it shouldn't even happen. I mean, that was Ray Brown's fault. I mean, that's the thing when you're when you're a team like the Redskins, those penalties will kill you. That penalty killed him. They had short yardage. It would have been a run. Then they forced him into third and five and a half here. You see Farad gets the pressure by Stubberfield. He had to get rid of the ball, and Tim McDonald just jumped up and took off with it. I don't know how you can how you can force it in there like that. But he just jumps up and there's Stubberfield with the pressure. Watch Tim McDonald with the one-hander. I mean he just jumps up, just grabs it with that left. He really got up in the yeah, air. Yeah, he did. Holy moly, did he get up? That's a heck of a catch. I didn't think he could get up that high. From that close to the quarterback to maintain possession of the ball, that's something. 24 to 3, 49. Watch Tim McDonald here in the clicker. He's number 46. A nickel, he is a linebacker, so he's right at the line of scrimmage. But watch how high he gets in the air. When you think he's just about as high as he goes, look, he just keeps going higher and higher and higher. And look, look at that. I mean, he is that far off the ground. That is amazing. In fact, his knees buckled when he hit the ground. Right. That's how high he was. Brian Mitchell. Gets back to the 30. Derek Laville made the stop. 219 years of the Marine Corps from the shores of Tripoli. That shot was taken from our camera atop RFK Stadium. There's Gus Ferran. Pass is caught by Henry Ellard. Gets across midfield. Deion Sanders with a stop. Yep, that was one on Dion there. Yeah, I think they've been kind of staying away from Dion. They tried to get him deep uh, once. 
in the first half they tried to get him on an out and up and that time they just they just got him on an in there. But I think when you talk about cover corners I think Deion Sanders is the best in football. In fact when I was talking to Sam Huff at halftime he thought he may be the best he's ever seen play. Incomplete high. The rut is knocked down right now. For an update, let's return to James Brown in our Hollywood studio. All right, Pat, New Orleans has finally scored in the game against Minnesota. Jim Everett going deep to Michael Haynes, a 36-yard strike. And we're all knotted at seven, that in the third quarter in Minnesota. Let's take you back to Washington, Pat and John. 24-3 the score here at RFK Stadium in Washington. On second down. Ricky Irvin. Picks up two or three. Today's possessions by the Redskins and the results. A punt, punt, interception. Three more punts, a field goal sandwiched in. And the interception. And the thing is, you know, they've they've moved the ball. I mean, they've 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 run the ball a little. They've they've hit some passes, but one, they haven't been able to do it consistently, and two, they haven't been able to do it when they get close to the goal line. Titus Winans with a fine catch. Troy Cook made sure he stayed down, but a diving reception by Titus Winans, the rookie. Everyone likes Tynus Winans. You know, he's from he's from Fresno State. He played there with Dilfer. Right. And when everyone would go to to watch Dilfer throw the ball as a you know one of the top quarterbacks, they would also watch Titus Winans catch it. And they kind of said, uh, you know, Dilfer's a, a great prospect, but so is Winans. Ricky Irvin. He gets down to about the 26. 3.20 left to play in the third quarter. Norv Turner is interesting. He, he played at the University of Oregon when George Seifert was a coach there. In fact, George Seifert uh, recruited Norv Turner. Right. And the other guy who was a quarterback there when Norv went there was Dan Fouts. And he's here today as well. Yeah, so they got the old Oregon thing. Seifert the coach, Norv Turner the backup quarterback, and of course Dan Fouts. The Hall of Fame quarterback. They need six. Henry Ellard has the Redskins to the 10. Stopped and wrestled to the ground by Dana Hall. The thing, they've been able to get down here. They've been able to do some of these things, and then something bad jumps up and gets them. Usually the 49er defense. Or a penalty. Remember right. the last time they got down oh, here, yeah. they had a third and short, and Ray Brown jumped off sides. And just when you're not real good, those little things kill you. Incomplete. In the direction of Ricky Irvins from Parat. The problem is they had too many guys in that direction. <laughs> they had three guys out there. Three Washington Redskins and four San Francisco 49ers, and it was really nothing to throw to. There is Dan Fouts. About Dan Fouts, he's right there. The ex Oregon quarterback, ex great San Diego Charger, Hall of Famer. I tell you, you know, we talk about Steve Young being a tough quarterback, and Steve Young is a tough quarterback. We played against Dan Fouts for years, and Dan Fouts is one of the toughest quarterbacks that ever played. He did hang in there. Rock lost it. Incomplete. Out of bounds. Ethan Horton. Dana Hall was with him. Dana Hall is the deep guy there, and again, they're throwing that same corner pattern. Where you're gonna when you get down here and you can just throw it to a spot. You just throw it up there and throw it to that back pylon and where your guy's gonna get it or no one's gonna get it. He had it right there. That was a heck of a catch. Yes. I think he caught that ball. It was just out of bounds. And the ball then came loose after he hit the ground. Third and ten. Pass completed about 
the six to Ricky Irvin. Not enough for a first down, and obviously not enough for a touchdown. And the fans don't like this, but I think when you have a young club like this and you're playing the 49, you've been struggling all day. I know it's easy to say go for it, but you just have to get something. I mean, you just got to get some points, take this, then go to work on it the next time. So Chip Lowmiller is in the game. Redskins, in fact, have not won a game here this year at RFK. Yeah, and then you take the they lost their last game here last year, so yep. their streak of losing here is pretty good. This or bad. 23 yards out by Low Miller. He wheels it high and good. And the Redskins have six. The 49ers have 24. 24 to 6. 49ers lead it. We were talking about the Redskins, Pat. They've lost five straight here at home this year and then one from last year, so they've lost six straight at home coming into this game. Dexter Carter starts inside the five. Dexter Carter could go. Did he stay in bounds? Yes, he did. Touchdown signaled and they never got him out of bounds. Ninety six yards. Dexter Carter. Well, you know that last hit instead of a tackle by Alan Grant. Number twenty six was over there. He came over to get him and instead of knocking him out of bounds. He just knocks Dexter Carter forward. You see here good hold good blocks. Here he gets a little help there from Floyd. Now Floyd is going to lead him. Now watch when Grant number 26 hits him right here at the end. Instead of knocking him out of bounds, he knocks him forward and knocks him right into the end zone. That was a good return. I mean, it had everything. It had good running and it had good blocking. Everything was set up. That was a that was a good return. What's this though? The extra point is botched. You're just so proud of your special yep. teams. You know, you get a kickoff return. This is one of the things that the 49ers have to do, improve their defense, improve their special teams. And you say, Dexter Tuck Carter, great return. Then you have a bad snap in your extra point. I don't even think they saw it, though. No. 30 to 6. Here it is. Wilms Fred. Myers, the holder. Well, that thing just launched itself. Uh, he, he snapped that at 12 o'clock. You snap it at 12 yeah. o'clock, the holder. Wilmsmeyer doesn't have a chance. No one has a chance. Time for lunch break. Yeah, I mean, he was right out of the picture. That that uh, that snap didn't even make the picture. Bart Oates, the snapper, for the extra point and field goal attempts. He's hugging William Floyd. Floyd was kind of his personal escort all the way down the field. And that play, he, he let the gas out of his tank, too. I mean, he... He was Dexter Carter didn't need him when he got down there. But <laughs> you're talking about his hamstrings and how fast he is. But he ran that fast and didn't pull a hamstring is probably what he's saying. Yeah. But he did. I mean he led Dexter Carter all the way down the field. Now William Floyd is trying to get some credit for it. Well the 49ers have two second half touchdowns. One the interception and then that kickoff return. Even the return, you see Dexter Carter's eyes. I mean, there's just, I mean, just a return for a touchdown brings happiness all through your body. Brian to kick off to Brian Mitchell. No, Doug Brian. No, bar none was right down there yep. leading them. Yep. They both went to Florida State. Uh, the Redskins got a turn. It's a good return. Out to about the 38. Derek Lavelle made the stop along with Antonio Goss. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised somewhere, Pat, if you, you know, if we saw Elvis Gerback, the backup quarterback of the 49ers. I think that there is a, a time in a game when you're ahead 30 to 6 and you get the game into the fourth quarter, and their big game is coming up next week against the Dallas Cowboys. I think in the fourth quarter is when you start to rest some guys or you start to think about doing that. 
And if you do it like we do against Philadelphia when it's out of hand, you got to do it the other way when it's out of hand. Barat was hit just as he let the ball go, incomplete, intended for Ricky Irvin's Charles Mann. It doesn't look on the sideline that there's a maybe they just told Elvis grew back now get up yeah but I think that he ought to because remember remember in the Philadelphia game when the game sure. got out of hand when the Eagles were beating the 49ers they they took Steve Young out and I think that you do the reverse of that I, mean, I think when you get ahead like this you take them out let the other guy get some experience and this handle will be exchanged 49ers had the ball. Lee Woodall made the recovery. Well, you know Gerback's not going to play with a cloth hat on. Didn't had a chance to get warm. It happened so suddenly. You know, this happens way too much in this league, and, and, and it shouldn't happen at all. I mean, the most automatic thing in all of football should be the exchange between the center and the quarterback. That should never happen. Shouldn't have to think about it. No, it should be automatic and, and you know you just I mean you've been doing that since your high school grammar school Young gets to water <laughs> 49ers can indeed hurt you quickly well, you know, and, it, and it's not all offense. I mean, you know, right. I mean, there's not even a name like uh, Jerry Rice in there or Ricky Waters. You got Jones, uh, the tight end. McDonald's was a, a defensive when he was a linebacker in a nickel. And, of course, Dexter Carter on the kickoff return. So they hit you with offense, they hit you with defense, and they hit you with special teams. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score. San Francisco 30, Washington 6. Fox NFL Sunday will continue after these messages from your local Fox station. At the end of this game, John Madden and I will be selecting the Miller Lite player of the game. Second and 11. Drops it to William Floyd. Inside the Redskin 30. First down. There's John Freeze. He'll get ready. I'm sure the Nerve Turner is going to make a, a change now and put Freeze in for Gus Farratt. Did you see that move that William Floyd yes. had? That wasn't bad. I mean, for a guy who, who weighs about 245, 250 pounds to be in doing spinners in the middle of the field. That's a look at Steve Young's eyes. He sees everything, concentrates on everything. With a guy this big doing moves like that, whoo! That's like you used to do at the Fun House or something when you'd go through those barrels. Coming at you. Reverse coming. Jerry Rice. Touchdown. They're just too good and too fast. He just turned on the Jets. And now I think it's time to take them out and rest them and get them ready for the Dallas Cowboys in Candlestick next week. I agree. Well, he looked like he was shot out of a jet. But Jim, he's here like a wide receiver. Now he comes back like he's starting in motion. Hand off to Waters. Hand back. Here's Steve Young. Whoa! He's yeah. not going to block anyone. It's too late in the game. Not very good tackling but some good running by Jerry Rice. I mean, this is a guy that when he sees that goal line, he has another speed. You notice that? I mean, he kicked up about three notches there. He's 32 years old, but he hadn't lost a step. The extra point is good. San Francisco leads the Redskins 37 to 6. The 49ers are going to have to try the extra point again. They're penalized for an illegal formation. Brian's kick was good. There's uh, illegal yeah. formation right there. Yeah, you wonder how any of this stuff ever works. And it's the truth. I mean, yeah, I mean, guys are hooked up. Now they got coaches hooked up to two or three guys. They got stuff on them. They got beepers. They're talking to the quarterback. They got cords, guys stepping on cords. <laughs> 
They feed them lunch down there and the thing spaghetti. I mean, you don't know, and then this stuff all gets mixed up into one. It'll be sometime tomorrow before they get that untangled. Bryant's kick is good. Well, and it. I think someone ought to send down there. I mean, they need some help. You got to put something yeah. in there and start pulling, start. Three guys just pull. Well, you see, well, one guy just quit and walked away, and another guy's coming in. His answer is to shake it. That if you shake it, there's no way three guys can do it. No, I don't. It's a one-man operation here. Yeah, and one guy's tightening it up. I think they're just trying to get some cord to someone. <laughs> And that, yeah, I mean, at some point you have to say, you know, what the heck? The coach has plenty of cord. Yeah. I mean, the guy, the guy at the other end of the cord is the the head coach, Norv Turner. Like I say, they got them all hooked up to guys up in the booth, the quarterbacks in the field, and the stuff going through those wires today wasn't very good for the Redskins. It looked like what we had for dinner last night. <laughs> Nor doesn't know what's going on back no, there. No, it doesn't know. No, if you did, it would it would drive you crazy. I mean, he has enough going on in front of him yep. he doesn't like without having to know what's going on behind him. Somebody left the phone off the hook. Yeah, they just take the phone off the hook. That's a visitor <laughs> offense right there. Well, they've got some. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they ought to, they ought to listen in to that one. And the 49ers have shown everything today on, I mean, offense. They've run it. They've passed it. They've run reverses. Interceptions, kickoff returns. William Bell out to about the 29. Today's game is being produced by Bob Stinner and directed by Sandy Grossman. Studio is produced by Scott Ackerson and directed by Bob Levy. The executive producers of Fox Sports are Ed Gorin and David Hill. Brent Jones is still talking about that long pass that he caught early. Well, he's got his breath now. He can talk. You know, in the second half, the 49ers have had three first downs and three touchdowns. Everyone's talking on the phone. You know, when things go well, everyone yeah. talks. I mean, you know, when, when things aren't going well, no one wants those things on. John Freeze, the quarterback. Fumble. Scramble. I think the Redskins got it back. Raleigh McKenzie recovered it. Well, John Freeze was the starting quarterback for the Redskins at the beginning of the season. Right. And then they went to Heath Schuler. Schuler started. Then they went to Gus Farratt. And now they're back with John Freeze in there. Freeze was a few years ago was a good looking quarterback for the San Diego Chargers. When we saw him early this year, he looked good against the Giants. Doesn't look so good now as Charles Mann takes him down. Yeah. Stubberfield is trying to say it's Mann. Look, they're pointing to a man's taking a bow. <laughs> he didn't know if they were going to boo or cheer him, but they finally found here he is. There's Charles Mann there. In that left handed stance. See him going against Simmons. He pushes, makes a pretty good move right there, and then a sack. Wanted to make sure the crowd knew who he was. Dana Stubblefield helped him by pointing to him. And Charles took a couple of bows and took a rest. Free. Incomplete. Desmond Howard was the intended receiver. And yeah, when things go bad, you just can't get them back. I mean, when, you know, when things happen like this, you're better just to try and start to run it. I mean, now the, the 49ers are stunting, they're rushing, they're, they're right there, they're knocking you down. Uh, uh, you don't have much of a chance here. That was Troy Wilson that made the hit on Freeze then, who replaced Charles Mann. And Freeze was probably saying, why'd you wait until it was 37 to 6? What do you want me to do now? Here's Ruby. Next to Carter, back to Hamlet. Nothing doing this time. A.J. Johnson down in a hurry. It's 37-6, 49ers. Next week, Fox NFL Sunday begins at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, with the hottest one-hour pregame show on television. And then it's Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader action. At 1 o'clock Eastern, the Bears travel to Miami 
Cardinals host the Giants. The Vikings take on the Patriots. Atlanta will play New Orleans. Then at 4 Eastern time, John and I will be in San Francisco for the game of the year. When the Cowboys battle the 49ers in a rematch of the last two NFC championship games. Check your local listing. Elvis Gerback. And next week at Candlestick, these are the people you'll see in action. Well, you talk about, you know, top players. I mean, Troy Aikman and Steve Young. I mean, that takes care of the quarterback thing. How about Emmett Smith and Ricky Waters? That's you know, and every good. time they play, they Emmett Smith really hurts them. That's the guy they have to stop. Daryl Johnson and Floyd, Irvin and Rice, Harper and Taylor, Novacek and Jones. I mean, you talk about some weapons all being on the field the same day. That game next Sunday is going to have all that stuff. Gerback fakes, gets it to William Floyd. Floyd breaks a couple of tackles. Now is knocked backwards. 37 to 6, San Francisco leading. I'll tell you, Steve Young feels a lot better about being taken out in this game than he did the last time we oh. saw him taken out. Remember against, against the, the Eagles? Philadelphia Eagles? He was unhappy about that. Oh, he was going crazy. There were no smiles on his face. There was no high ten zen. I tell you, he he is a tough guy. I mean, he you know he he looks fresh here. He looks good. He's given speeches, but uh, he got batted around a little today. Yeah, he did. Like eight times, the defensive backs in conversation with the quarterback. That's kind of rare. Well, he's thanking them because they gave him a touchdown. Flag on the play. Harry Boatswain, I believe, pulled back too soon. He's talking to Tim McDonald there. Tim McDonald played a heck of a game. Yeah, he did. Ball start. Number 65 of the offense. Five yards. It's still third down. Because even before, even before McDonald got that interception, I mean, he was making a lot of tackles on runs and stuff. In fact, I think that whole secondary played well. Eric Toy Davis, Cook. Toy, Toy Cook, Cook got made that the interception. interception. Yeah. Deion Sanders is always super. Third and eight. It's one of those stars we left off that list. Deion Sanders. How about Deion Sanders against Michael Irvin? Charles Haley. <laughs> Darrell Green up in William Floyd. Yeah, Harris Barton was talking about that that uh, brace he has on his right arm, and he said it it had the best material in Silicon Valley is in that brace. The thing that he's worried about it was funny. We were talking yesterday, and he said I'm worried about Charles Haley grabbing the hinge. So <laughs> it was the night before the Redskin game, and Harris Barton, who was. The biggest worry wart in the NFL. Oh, yeah. Look, he, he gives a thumbs up. Feels good. Everything's okay. So he gives a <laughs> signal. He knows. But the biggest worry wart in the NFL. He was not only worrying about today, but he's worrying about next week already. Will Smyre gets off a high kick to Brian Mitchell. Harris Barton, in fact, he said, if I get that thing hurt again, I'll go meditate on Mount Olympus. Back at RFK Stadium, Pat Summerall with John Madden. San Francisco 37, Washington 6. Now, if you look at those 49ers still wearing those throwback jerseys, with this game today, they'll be 6-0 and in those jerseys. Like I said earlier, I'll guarantee you they're going to wear them against the Cowboys next week. Here's John Freeze. To Ethan Horton. Up for first, the Redskins hurry up. You know, every week they have to tell the league that they're going to wear them. They, I guess, they can do it all year, as long as they tell the league. Freeze out to Urban, out of bounds. Sometimes when it's 37 to six and you're the coach, there's, there's not a heck of a lot. I mean, they, you know, things just. They just take it up and run it away from you. And there's not much you can do. There's a guy who does a heck of a job. And I, and I think he really does. I think of all the coaches in the National Football League, George Seifert's the most underrated. And he has the best winning percentage of any coaches and probably most underrated and 
underappreciated. That is not an underrated haircut. I don't know what that is. Ooh. Intended for Ethan Horton. Incomplete. Well, you know what he did? They had the bye week, and he wasn't sure how this was going to work, but what he did was shorten the practice. He wanted to have shorter practices and higher intensity and then see what the results were. And the things that he was looking for was intensity and force and sharpness and I'm not sure exactly what all those words mean, but I think I think he had it. I mean, you know that you know you're going to have your offense and your defense, but he wants them to be intense and he wants them to be forceful and he wants them to be sharp. And I think to be ready for next week's game is what he's talking about. And I think they are. Third and long. Freeze leads to Ellard. And a flag on the play. Flag on the play. Ellard made the catch. And Eric Davis. And, you know, the 49ers have been playing against Henry Ellard for a long Forever. time. 12 years. They were all saying that, you know, that, that back here in the NFC East, they don't know Henry Ellard, and they're surprised what a great year he's having. They said, we've known that. We've been playing against him twice a year, every year. We know how good Henry Ellard is. They picked up the flag. There is no penalty. Well, they caught 61 passes last year. He's one of those guys that stays in great shape. Breeze going deep. Titus Wyman. Pass is intercepted, I think, yes, by Eric Davis. Yeah, I think Deion Sanders coming to the 49ers made Eric Davis a better Rook corner. The Flag back Number here. Number 71 of the defense, 15 yards, first down. Roughing the passer is going to be called against Charles Mann. So that's going to not only be a, a penalty, but it's also going to take the interception and the ball away from the 49ers. There's man number 71. And I don't know, unless unless it's a blow to the head. That's what it is. He can be. take one step after he throws it, and that looked pretty good. And so it had to be a, a blow to the head, which they're they're watching pretty closely now. I mean that what I mean that wasn't a bad unnecessary. There's Steve Wallace. That's not two helmets he has. That's a shell that goes on top of the helmet that gives him extra protection. And it's heavy. Ricky Irvin's the ball carrier. George Seifert was saying yesterday that helmet that Steve Wallace wears is so heavy. He said, I'm not sure I'd be strong enough to hold it up. Yeah, well, that's why he's not an offensive tackle, and Steve Wallace is. Ricky Irvin dives for first down. But you can tell the score is 37-6 when you have your starting tackle on the sideline doing a show and tell. Yeah. <laughs> showing you, okay, here's how it works. Here it is. I take my helmet here, and I put this on top of it, then I put both of them on top of my head, and it... Uh, it helps me. Fits right there. Washington takes a timeout as Freeze comes over to the sideline. 7.55 left. All right in the middle is John McVeigh, who handles a lot of the signing of players and the administrative duties of the 49ers. Former Giant coach. Brian Mitchell He's just outside the 10 up by Tim McDonald Don Freeze going to work in a hurry second and four first and goal Redskins Brian Mitchell gets the carry Lee Woodall made the stop well, last time they were down there, they had to settle for a field goal. The time before that, they had an interception. So I'm sure with Freeze, they'd like to get one in here. Three touchdown, Ethan Horton. Well, they don't want a quarterback controversy, but when you have three quarterbacks, you don't have none. And I think that's what he's trying to trying to get to is to get to one. You know, is Schuler going to be ready? I think he's eventually going to be the quarterback. You keep going with Gus Farad, or do you come back and go with John Freeze? That'll be discussed all week here. 
They're going for two points, I think. Freeze looking to the sideline. He should go for two. No kicker in the game. Freeze brings him out in regular formation. It's good. Brian Mitchell over the top. Fans are saying, heck, we should have had John Freeze in there the whole game. Why didn't you do it like this all game? Here's the touchdown pass. Freeze looks. He waits till he comes away from Toy Cook and just zips it right in. Here's the two points. That's just a, a trap. See the guard pulls and traps. Mitchell just comes and takes off about the two-yard line, goes straight up and over. 37 to 14. Bad-looking paint job. What was that, a trombone? Yeah, oh yeah. How do you ever decide when you're a kid you want to play a trombone? I think if I were going to play anything, I'd want to be a drummer. Give me some drums. I need to tell you, I played the oboe. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It looks like a clarinet. That guy there played the But it tuba. makes a weird noise. All the dancers, all the happiness comes out. Touchdowns equal happiness. Yes, <laughs> they do. I'll tell you, when they have a winning team here, they they do know how to celebrate. This is a this is a great place. This is the toughest ticket to get when they're winning, even if they're not winning in pro football. Dexter Carter. Flag on the play. Carter got it back to about the 38. And that flag was after Carter was about 15 yards back. past. Holding. Number 33. 10 yards. First down. Yeah, Carter was about 10 yards past that spot when that flag came out. So there's not many smart holes, but if that were holding, that was a dumb hole because that was yeah. way behind the runner. In the midst of all the preparation for the 49ers, Norv Turner yesterday, when we were meeting with him, well, here's the hole first. Yep, well, it wasn't behind him. He just called the ball. Oh, he was still holding him yeah. there. I don't think he saw the first hole, and then he just grabbed up and pulled him back after he went by. Elvis Gerback, the quarterback. Derek Lavelle, the ball carrier. In the middle of our conference with Norv Turner, he got a phone call from his wife who said, you left home with your son's shoulder pads in the trunk of the car. Yeah, and I saw his wife, uh, Nancy, coming into the game today, and she said, I didn't know what else to do. <laughs> our son had to play a game. Norv knew he was wrong, and he took the, he took the equipment. The kid has to go to the game. No shoulder pads. Nancy pad. has to take him to the game. He doesn't have a shoulder pad. You can't play without the shoulder pad. And she has to call the head coach. What else is she going to do? Well, they got it worked out. Next to Carter. Tripped up by Kurt Govea. I asked Nancy Turner coming into the game today how it is being a head coach's wife. So it's easy. She goes, no, it's tough. Well, how about George Seifert's wife, Linda? Where'd she go for three Mount weeks? She was Kilimanjaro. She uh, climbed. Kiliman yeah, yeah. I mean, I, and and she got all the way up the top. It was so cold up there. She stayed there for 20 minutes. But she was doing that like for three weeks yeah. or something. She was gone while while George was out there coaching. Well, he got his hair cut too. I think I think he got his hair cut after she got home. That's Mark Logan. In fact, when they got married, you know, they're both mountain climbers, I guess, because when they got married, they 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 went on a backpacking trip in the Sierras for a week. Well, he's climbed a lot of mountains in the NFL, hasn't he? 
Yep, like I said, I think he's he's one of the most underrated and maybe the most underappreciated uh, head coach in the league. I mean, he just he just quietly goes about his job of preparation and winning, and then walks away and gets on to the next one. Sometimes that's very hard to do. Logan over the left side, stopped by Shane Collins. You know, and the thing that haunts him uh, you know, is the Dallas Cowboys. Yep. I mean, it's not that the 49ers aren't good. I mean, they, to me, the best team in football in the last three years have been the Dallas Cowboys. And the second best team in football have been the San Francisco 49ers. Well, yeah, like they were talking about yesterday, they got some kind of new oxygen chamber that they get in that's supposed to speed up healing. And in the opinion of the players, the reason they got it is because the Cowboys got one. Yeah. It's called a hyperbolic chamber. And you have to get in it for an hour and a half. Who would do that? Well, if you want to heal faster. There's Richard Dent, one of the off-season acquisitions. I wonder if he gets in that hyperbolic chamber. But the stuff they have now, I mean, it's amazing. You, know, you talk about hyperbolic chambers, though. They have a bye, and, and then they have surgeries during the bye. I mean, John Taylor has a knee surgery. Right arthroscopic knee surgery and he's back starting in the game today. I mean that to me is amazing. That's amazing medicine. I mean I don't know about hyperbolic chambers but when a guy can have surgery, a scope, and then be back in uniform and start the game, that's amazing medicine. Garback. Ball is loose. Redskins have it. Daryl Morrison touchdown Redskins. From 31 yards away. Get that band going again. Get those people dancing again. Don't go home yet. We still got some celebrating. A lot of people have gone. Get that trombone guy going again. The Jack owner. Cook. The owner of the Redskins. Jack. He's been around so long. He knows when you celebrate and when you don't. When you get up and when you don't. I think Jack Ken Cook knows that it's all over. I think Jack Kent Cook ever believes it's all over. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, he'd been on the other side of these things, you know, for so many years, and you know, has done such a great job with this Redskin team, and you know, and the coach. I mean, Joe Gibbs was here, Bobby Beathard was here, and they really had a strong organization over the years. Go for two again. Freeze back to throw. In zone two. Titus Winan. 37-22. John Freeze is relaxed. That's one thing. You come in, you have nothing to lose. You may as well just be relaxed. But she'll get excited. Jack and Cook says, no, we, we're too far away. We don't have a chance yet. Fifteen points difference, though, yeah. and, and you still got that two point. I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, it's a it's a stretch, and it's but they have to have something to root for, and they can root for two touchdowns and two two pointers because they just got two touchdowns and two two pointers. They got room to root too. A lot of people have gone home. I think that group's probably paid to stay. So is that group. I don't know if you could pay that group. Oh, but they've been here a long yeah. time. I mean, the Washington Redskins and the Hoggets. Watch the... The Redskins are blitzing. They hit Gerback from the, from the back. Daryl Morrison just picks that thing up cleanly on the run. Takes it into the end zone. The 49ers didn't turn to defense. Now the 49ers are with their hands team here. They're yep. what you call onside prevent. See, they got guys like Jerry Rice in there. They got Ricky Waters in there. Brent Jones. They go the other way. Flag on the play. Yeah. 
Ball didn't get 10 yards. If the Redskins touched it before it got there, before it got to 10, it belongs to the 49ers. Forty Niners are offside. We get everyone talking and arguing. All we have there's a big huddle. There's too many players in there. You got to get rid of the players. Got to get them away from you. Came over to. He found a friend, North Turner, who says the ball belongs to us. But it didn't go 10 yards. Unless the 49ers touched it before yeah, it went the 49ers 10 yards and then right. the Redskins got it. Number 40. He crossed the restraining line before the ball was kicked. Five yards and re-kick. William Floyd. Yeah, you're going to see it right here. Well, the ball's already been kicked. And but they say that he's across the restraining line before the ball was kicked. But as you say, the ball's in the air. Yeah, I don't know that he was. I think they didn't want to make a decision on that onside kick, so they just called it on uh, William Floyd. It's a rookie. Yeah, and he probably didn't leave early. I mean, that ball was in the air when he crossed there. Again, there is a 10-yard restraining line, and that's 10 yards from where the ball is placed. They'll kick from the 35 now. So then the restraining line will be on the 45 yard right, line. Right. And the 49ers can't come across that line until the ball is kicked. But they can touch the ball in that 10 yard area. The Redskins can't touch the ball. Try it again. Kick it out of bounds. Low Miller caught it too well. Out of bounds by the kickers. Five yards. Re kick. Now we can just go on and on. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. We may never get this started. Having this play again. I wonder if they ever got all that wire untangled. I think so because they're getting better plays in there. Since they yeah. started untangling that wire, the Redskins scored 16 points. While it was tangled, they couldn't do anything. Well, they got to work on it some more. That looks pretty good. Yeah. I mean, that, that lets all the stuff get through, you know, from one mouth to the other ears. Maybe not all the stuff. Look at Jim Hannafin there, the old offensive line coach, trying to figure out what happened. Pete Rodriguez is a special teams coach to his right. Hannafin knows. If anybody knows what happened, he knows. <laughs> Again. Bubble. I think the Redskins got it. They did. Didn't go 10 yards. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Yeah, they pointed. That's a yeah. Redskins ball. Yeah, it is. And again, with the two-point conversion, the Redskins uh, needed an onside 10. kick. The ball went 10, was caught, was fumbled by Floyd. Yep. And was recovered by the Redskins, so it's their ball. Pat Eilers made the recovery. Floyd went to get it, and as he as he dropped, the ball bounced out of there. What you want is one guy to go and catch it, then the others to get in front and block. Floyd would have been better by going and becoming a blocker and letting the next guy in catch it. It's hard to make that decision with that ball bouncing at you, though. First and ten, Washington. Free over the middle. A lot of running by Ricky Irvin's not many yards. Well, yeah, the, the, the Redskins are fired up now. Oh, yeah. proud to stay here is fired up. And the 49ers are thinking that we call in the dogs too soon. Second oh, half. Huh? I think they didn't snap the ball soon enough then. Freeze pass was complete to the referee. Number 63. Five yards. It's still second down. That's that onside kick, Pat. Is this the way you guys used to do it where you just kick the top of the ball? You don't kick it in the middle? That's right. You just kick the top and then kind of just 
hope to get a, a high hopper? Well, we came at it in a different direction. He used to come straight at it. Yeah, didn't right, he? right. But see, Floyd, and he became a blocker and let the next guy catch it. And then maybe get two blockers in front, it would have been a better play. Second and 11. Freeze gets rid of it. Ethan Horton makes the reception. No, he doesn't. Incomplete. Brings up third down. That's one thing that Freeze can do. I mean, he can he can get back there and get rid of the ball quickly. I mean, uh, probably of the three quarterbacks, again, he's he's the only one with any experience, and maybe that's why he can get rid of it with more quickness than the other two. Freeze is eight out of eleven. And one touchdown. And he threw for the two-point conversion. Redskins move too soon. Ball start. They made Number a climb. Five yeah. yards. It's still third down. Trey Johnson. We met him yesterday. He's a load. Yeah, he is. He's gonna he's gonna be a big one too. I mean, he's three hundred and fifteen. I mean, he's, gonna be, <laughs> he's a big one. He's gonna be a good one. He's a three hundred and fifteen pound rookie from from Temple, and. He was telling me he wants to be like Art Shell, 6'2", 315 pounds, and that he would like to, that Art Shell was always his idol and wants to be like him. That wouldn't be bad. Freeze. Hits the umpire. And the umpire threw a flag. The umpire was trying to dodge the, the, the ball and throwing a flag at the same time. And he called a tripping penalty against the Redskins. That's what a lineman usually does when he's beaten. That's a last resort, tripping. Tripping in the middle of the line. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Reggie Roby. What's left of the crowd doesn't like this decision to punt. Now they didn't know who it was. They just said the middle of the line, and the umpire was turned the other way, trying to, yeah. trying to dodge a football yeah. when he called it. <laughs> Roby gets off a rocket. Still hustling. A.J. Johnson is down. Oh, they're saying it touched the goal line, but they're going to bring that one out to the 20. I think it did. I don't know that they hustled enough. It looked like to me that they were a little slow getting down there. That's this. If the ball touches the, the goal line or goes in the end zone, you see right there, I don't know if he was in the end zone. It doesn't look like it. The, it's there. Okay, it's there it's okay. If he's in the air and touches the ball, it's okay. I think his hand hit the ground. Yeah, if he if he's in the ground or any part of him is in the end zone, then he can't touch the ball. Maybe his right foot was on the line. Maybe. No. Nope. His hand might have scraped the goal line. I don't know. I think I I, I think that was a pretty good play, really. Yeah, I do. Logan. Taken down by Tyrone Stowe. Now one good thing about this, you can show this film if you're the 49ers to your your team and 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 they can't be overconfident. I mean you still have something to 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 get on them about. And and you always have to have that. I mean, one thing that you don't want you have to guard against when you win is overconfidence. I think the Redskins, when you lose like they do, you have to guard against loss of confidence, and it's a heck of a balancing deal in there. Again, a reminder about next week. Early game, Chicago, Miami, Arizona against the Giants, Minnesota, New England, Atlanta, New Orleans, and then John and I will be at Candlestick for the match between Dallas and San Francisco, and you got to leave pretty soon, don't you? I'm going to leave right out of here, get on Highway 80. Yeah. Take it west, and I'll end up at Candlestick Park. You, mean, you make it sound so simple. No, no, it's not simple. I mean, I got a lot of, you know, like Pennsylvania and Ohio and 
and Iowa and Nebraska and Wyoming and Utah. I, mean, I got a lot of stuff in there in between. <laughs> yeah. I just stay on 80. Dexter Carter was the ball carrier. All-time NFL completion percentage leaders. Two of the three will be on the field next week at Candlestick. And yeah. one of them used to be there. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty good group. And uh, you know, Joe Montana. I think in all the years that we've been doing this together, Joe Montana to me was the best offensive player I've ever seen. And and to have Steve Young take his place and do what he's doing, and Troy Aikman, you know, a couple Super Bowls in a row, and. I don't know, maybe the best right now. I mean, it's going to be an interesting thing. I mean, to see yeah. this guy battle against Troy Aikman, and 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 that's that's one that I'm really looking forward oh, to. Oh, me too. But Steve Young, well, I thought was batted around today, but he looks pretty fresh there. I mean, I think they, I think by getting that big lead, again, they got a kickoff uh, uh, touchdown, they got a defensive touchdown. I think that gave them a little cushion so that they could get him out of the game, and the 49ers came into this game fresh and I think they're probably going to go into next week's game fresh. Don't you think now John you live in the area that uh, the shadow of Montana has finally been lifted off Steve Young's shoulders. No. Uh -uh. You uh, don't? No it, it, it hasn't been and Steve Young knows that and it's not going to be lifted off his shoulders until he wins the Super Bowl and you know Joe Montana when he was a quarterback there won four Super Bowls and Steve Young hasn't won one yet and until that happens, and I, I'm not saying that's right or fair or right. anything, but that's that's the way it is. On third down, Elvis Gerbach. Flags fly. They stop the clock again with two minutes and 20 seconds left to play. I just sort of got the feeling uh, earlier this year when we did that game in Kansas City and they... Kansas City beat San Francisco, but I have a feeling that on a nose tackle, five yards. Montana's theirs and Steve Young's ours now. Yeah, and, and I think there's something to that. I mean, I think Steve Young has earned his stripes, and uh, you know, and everyone respects him, everyone likes him, he's well liked. But I think Joe Montana will always be a San Francisco 49er, and those four Super Bowl rings that just doesn't go away. Where are those kids playing? <laughs> no. You think huh? uh, they know what the score is? Are they down on the field? Yeah. I hope so. The game's going on. They're playing patty cake. Yeah, no, no, no. They're playing. No, they're making. making uh, uh, right they're making, the sand, they're yeah. making mud pies. They're patty caking the mud pies. Don't eat the mud. No. Don't eat the dirt. <laughs> you can't eat the dirt. I mean, you know that. That's even gravel. That's the warning track for baseball. Yeah. How do these kids get down in the field? They don't care. Do you see that little girl eating the dirt, though? Yeah. Gravel. Maybe she ought to be in the All Madden team. Maybe that's where we ought to start. She should. <laughs> I think you're right. The All Madden kids. Just, I mean, look, look at that. That's the cutest thing I've ever seen <laughs> on a football field. It's the first time you've ever seen that on a football field. Logan. First down for the 49ers. That'll get us down to the two-minute warning. Hi. Nope, Fox Sports. <laughs> Pretty good billboard. Does it go on TV? What time do you guys want? What do you think you on TV? What time do you be on? Two minutes left. Redskins are out of timeouts. 37 22, the 49ers lead. There's Harris Barton's brace. He's showing the brace now. That's the best material in the Santa Clara Silicon Valley. <laughs> but he had it covered up before. But only oh. Harris Barton would have the best material. Yeah. He said they brought a lot of brace doctors in. 
Yeah, four or five brace doctors with all special braces. I guess they had a vote or an election, and somehow this brace won the whole thing. The good part about the whole thing is he didn't get it hurt again. Yeah, and, you know, that he got through, and and you could tell that he feels good and feels yeah. strong, and, and he wanted this. I mean, he was his target was to come back the week before they play the Cowboys. The Miller Light player of the game is Tim McDonald of the 49ers. He came up with that big interception and went airborne in the process. The Miller Light player of the game, Tim McDonald. And early in the game, be before that interception, he was he was really coming up on run force. And uh, you know, one thing the Redskins wanted to do was be able to run the ball. And I think Tim McDonald was a big reason that they weren't able to run the ball early. Redskins, no more timeouts. They can't stop it. They can head for the respective locker rooms and the 49ers beat the Redskins 37 to 22. Charles Mann saying hello to some buddies. George Seifert who recruited North Turner back in college. I thought it went my mind for a second. Yeah. Hey, good job. Good luck. Good luck. Charles Mann again. Deion Sanders. The final score here at RFK Stadium. 37-22. Coming up, it's the NASDAQ stock market post-game report. James and Terry will get you up to date on all today's NFL action with scores and highlights from around the NFL. That's all next on the NASDAQ Stock Market Post Game Report. <laughs> 